on. Hi. Good morning, sis. And oh, good. Good morning. Good morning. Haven't seen you guys for what feels like months. Yeah. It was only <laughs> yesterday, wasn't it? That, that's true. <laughs> yes, that is true. Oh, hi, guys. Thank you for being here with us. I'm really enjoying doing these lessons with you and the feedback and the, we're journeying together. This is so, so much better than just doing the self study. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Today's lesson is 162. Um, who's reading today, sis? <laughs> Do I look like a stunned mullet? <laughs> I like your thing. I'm a, like a stunned fish. <laughs> like, stunned fish. That's right. That in Australia we say a stunned mullet. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, about, uh, since the next one is such a biggie and it's on your favorite topic, death. Why don't I read this today's? Yes. Does that sound good. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. I am as God created me. And I would love for us all to just join on this first sentence. <laughs> I mean, for all of it, but really for this first sentence. I am as God created me. This single thought held firmly in the mind would save the world. Can we stop there, sis? Yeah. Yeah. Can we breathe? I am as God created me. Holy innocent. The separation has never occurred. There is no guilt. Thank only you. Only God's view is the true and only view. Thank you. Thank you. From time to time, we will repeat it as we reach another stage in learning. It will mean far more to you as you advance. These words are sacred, for they are the words God gave in answer to the world you made. By them, his answer, these words, his words, by them, the world we made disappears. Mm -hmm. And all things seen within its misty clouds and vaporous illusions vanish as these words are spoken, for they come from God. Wow. They come from God. Well, there's the power of intention right there i am as god created me That's right. when 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 we really rest in the meaning of i am as god created me there's so much light you can feel it in there that any perceived darkness has to disappear so to the extent that we're willing to accept all of it, what that means, God's answer and the power and the light in that, in these words, in the, in the acceptance of them is the power to dissolve the entire illusion of separation. And for everyone, not just for one. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah, because the ego loves to grab this, doesn't it? Oh, I am as God created me. Yeah. <laughs> No, oh, there's one, one sun, lots of individuated expressions, but there's just one sun. So, so sis, just going a little bit deeper with this. Yeah. Um, by, by really 
accepting this and receiving this statement from God, I am as God created me, Jesus says here in that first paragraph, by this it disappears, the world that we made or through the ego disappears and all things seen within its misty clouds yeah. and vaporous illusions vanish. <clears throat> you got the gap diagram there? Yes. <clears throat> so in response to, I wonder what that would be like, God's immediate answer was inconceivable and I am as God created me. I think that would almost be the son's answer to God's de declaration of inconceivable. I am as God created me. I can be nothing else. There is no power. There's no mind apart from God's mind. There's no place to go in the infinite all of God. Remember, this is only the dreaming state. So this has never happened in actuality. You can dream that it did, but it doesn't make it true. I am as God created me. That's one whole. That's the sonship in union where fragmentation and separation are an impossibility. Mm. And, to, and to behold every single brother. It's been very helpful for me to know that there's one view of every brother and that's God's view. And am I holding that view with God? Am I viewing my brother as part of that one self, no different from me, no separate interests? His call for love is my call for love. We are one. His illusions are my illusions, vice versa. That I can forgive for the entire sonship. I mean, this is really big, but there's just God's view. And we're either in alignment with that, accepting it, or nothing's happening at all we're totally asleep nothing real is is occurring a sleeping mind is doing nothing mm. so if i feel triggered by somebody mm -hmm. what's actually happening yeah i'm just seeing something in the gap something some image that's my physical senses are being pulled to so i can give it my belief and not join with the will of God, my will, our, our will, right? This is the way we keep stuck in the gap, seeing things that aren't there and responding to them and thinking about them and trying to solve them independently of Holy Spirit. And yeah, we, and we spend lifetimes after lifetimes after lifetimes. So if we truly want to awaken from the dream mm -hmm. in its entirety, we don't want to be in the wash cycle of dreams. I want reality. I want to love a perfect love that doesn't change. I want to experience the truth as God has given it, the kingdom of heaven that's already ours. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you like to experience that in lieu of nothing? Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is nothing. Let's not lend the power of our mind to nothing. Thank you. Yeah. Here is the word by which the son became his father's happiness, his love, and his completion. Here creation is proclaimed and honored as it is. There is no dream these words will not dispel. No thought of sin and no illusion that the dream contains that will not fade away before their might. Crap. See, that's the positive separation right there. I can't be as God created me and also... Mm, be uh, subject to victimization by my humanhood. Yes. Right? That's the truth is true and nothing else is true. We're all okay. Isn't this nice? Isn't this a beautiful thought? We love this. God is good. God is loving. Yes, yes, yes. This is the truth. 
But this is also true, and I can take all day explaining about what this mythical me is experiencing and feeling and seeing and has to do today and has to defend itself and what it's seeking and what journey it's on independent of the Father. Mm -hmm. No, the truth is true, and nothing else is true. Nothing in the gap has ever been real. This is our insistence. We're okay with this. It's the second part, and nothing else is real. Mm. By the way, just practically, uh, for those who are just coming into the lessons recently and you want the gap diagram, yeah. it's in the description box or show more box. <laughs> just down there. <laughs> it's there and you can print it out. So the link is in there. It's called the gap diagram. Thank you, sis. Can we, can we just, I mean, like, hello, there is no dream. These words will not dispel no thought of sin and no illusion. No illusion that the dream contains, the gap contains, that will not fade away before the might of the words, I am as God created me in a felt, deeply accepted state. I think he means it. Every single, there's nothing in the gap that the words will not dispel. Okay, they, these words, I am as God created me, are the trumpet of awakening that sounds around the world. Oh boy, mm. the dead awake in answer to its call. Yeah, because death is the illusions, the gap itself, no illusion can withstand the power of the words, I am as God created me, and God is life eternal. Life mm -hmm. eternal created you in its image and likeness. What you are is life eternal. You have never been born into matter. You have never become mythical me. You are one in God, remaining as God is causing you. I am as God created me, you. Ah, the dead awake in answer to its call, and those who live and hear this sound will never look on death. Do you think that that's a um, metaphor? <laughs> well, come on. A lot of, I mean, there's are a few Course in Miracles teachers, a long time Course in Miracles teachers, um, yes. who, who, who do believe this is metaphor. Why would some of it be literal and then all of a sudden we come up to death and then we make it metaphorical? Only because we don't think we could reach that bar. It's like, instead of trying to reach the bar, let's lower the bar. Well, it's, he certainly can't mean it's literal. Or, well, that was Jesus and that's not us. Well, there's a separation right there. Are you the Christ or aren't you the Christ? The Christ has already overcome the world. It is literal. The overcoming of death has been done. Your question, are you the Christ? Are you one with what has already overcome the world? Well, you, well, you are if you are as God created you. Whew. Well, as Jesus said, we were with him when he overcame the world. And, of course, in that, he overcame That's it. the illusion of physical death. He did. Through his resurrection. That's right. We were with him. The Christ is. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> we just have to accept it. That's what's taking so damn long. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the illusion of time <laughs> is our procrastination, right? Yeah. Is, is, as Jesus explains, is the fear of awakening, the terror of yeah. awakening. To... Another... Go, go on, no, you go. What another beautiful way of procrastination by calling it metaphorical. What a way to remove hope from mm. the mind. My God, he certainly can't possibly mean that. But it's hilarious because he's already done it. It's not like it is yet to be done. It's just now it's up to us to accept whether we are mythical me or the Christ. And this is the declaration where we consent. I am not mythical me. I am as God created me. Did That's Jesus it. say that um, we would do as he did and more? No more because I returned to the, the father. So... <laughs> That's what he meant. He didn't mean like it's that there would be more time in the illusion for us to continue to do his works. If he had stayed, people would have glorified him and tried to make him God. And he knew that. 
they were already trying to make him king. And uh, that, that, that would have over, um, that would have dismissed his entire mission. Notice how he always gave glory to God and that, that God's not in the dream. So to have stayed would have, uh, would have undermined everything that he taught. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this is big. This is the overcoming of death. Holy indeed is he who makes these words his own. Arising with them in his mind, recalling them throughout the day, at night bringing them with him as he goes to sleep. His dreams are happy and his rest secure, his safety certain, and his body healed. Is that metaphor? <laughs> no, sis, it's literal. <laughs> I just, uh, just double checking. Okay. <laughs> God would not be loving if it was metaphor. No, he wouldn't. I just, you know, I'm really like indignant about anybody that would call it metaphor, but that's a, that's a judgment in my mind. Please yeah. forgive me. Just want to be really, really <laughs> clear. Yes. Okay. So he says here, his dreams are happy. And his rest secure, mm -hmm. his safety certain, and his body healed, right? Yes. Okay. Because, because he sleeps mm -hmm. and wakens with the truth before him always. That's right. Okay. Yeah. He will save the he will save the world because he gives the world what he receives each time he practices the words of truth. How is that possible? Because there's one mind. The mm -hmm. mind has never been fragmented into billions of privatized minds. That's only happening in a dream. But as the one, any part of the one mind awakens, it affects, it blesses, it heals the whole, right? Mm -hmm. The light turns on and it blesses every um, aspect of that one mind. But they're just, yeah, there's just the one. What I receive from him, the whole sonship receives. Because I am one with the sonship. All right. Today we practice simply. For the words we use are mighty. And they need no thoughts beyond themselves to change the mind of him who uses them. Wow. Mm -hmm. So holy is it changed that it is now the treasury in which God places all his gifts and all his love to be distributed to all the world increased in giving kept complete because it's sharing is unlimited oh, wow there's that holographic ripple effect right that's it and thus you learn to think with god holographically wholly unifiedly inclusively <laughs> christ's vision has restored your sight by salvaging your mind. Mm. A healed mind projects only healed images while we're still here in the, in the dream. That's the real world. Okay, we honor you today. Wow. Yours is the right to perfect holiness you now accept. With this acceptance is salvation brought to everyone for who could cherish sin or separation when holiness like this has blessed the world? Who could despair when perfect joy is yours, available to all as remedy for grief and misery, all sense of loss, and the complete escape from sin and guilt? Good question. And who would not be brother to you now, you, his Redeemer, and his Savior? Who could fail to welcome you into his heart with loving invitation, eager to unite with one like him in holiness? You are as God created you. Beautiful. <sighs> These words dispel the night and darkness is no more. The light is come today to bless the world 
for you have recognized the Son of God, and in your recognition is the world's. Wow. You know, just to support this, um, it was revealed to me that, um, mm, you know, while the altar of God lay within us, right, mm -hmm. in our mind, our heart, yeah, uh, we won't completely recognise that that altar of God is in, our, in us until we recognise that it is in our brother. That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's, there's a huge commitment there. Yes. It's to want to see it in our brother, right? Uh, that gives permission to Holy Spirit to reveal it to us. That's right, because he says we don't get to keep anything until we've given it away. So here comes the insight, right? Mm. I am as God created me. Well, like I said, the ego likes to hijack that and make that privatize. Yeah, it's pretty good, but clearly that's not true about my brother. <laughs> so that keeps the separation, which is the foundation of the dream going. But mm. when you receive that download of that, I, that this truth, you know, I am as God created me. While you're not willing to extend it to the brother, you can't keep it. You, it will never be known. Never. That is key. You can't know it for yourself alone. It is impossible. Yes. Thank you. But when you extend it to a brother and you see the beauty in your brother, absent the ego filter and its judgments and opinions based on a past that's non-existent. You're willing and you want to, you desire with the power of your mind to no longer enforce separation, but you want to join and you see the beauty in your brother. If you ever saw your brother as God is seeing him, you would cry. Okay, mm -hmm. it happens, just tears, spontaneous tears. Then, you know, the holiness of your brother looks back upon you and that's it. Love says you give it away to have it. You have to extend it to see your brother as God is seeing him to know that you are as God created you. And that's why forgiveness is crucial. All right. Isn't it? Absolutely crucial here. Yes. Because those blocks prevent us from seeing our brother. That's how we never know that we are as God created us because we use these defenses in front of our brother, who is the way in which we see our own holiness. I'll never know my own holiness while I'm running interference, preventing myself from seeing the beauty in a brother. Okay, so that really supports that all that's ever going on, even in the dream, of course, in the dream, is that uh, everything is either an expression of love, which we clearly recognize yes. and um, are thankful for, Mm -hmm. And everything else that shits us off is a call for love. That's it. Right? Yes. And obviously, you know what? It's like it's our brother's call for love, okay? But it's our call for love. It's the one call for love. Because sure. love answers the brother's call and mine simultaneously, which is how you know the call for love is the one. Okay. The sleeping son. And Particularly if my brother's call for love truly triggers me. Yeah. It's my call for love. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because because again, there's one view of your brother. I am as God created me. God's view is right there. And if I'm not seeing it, that's my stuff. I'm I'm putting my filter over uh, the holy Christ. And looking him up and down and saying, oh, well, you know, we've got 101 snap judgments the second we see a brother based on a past. We think we know something. Well, there is something to know. This is the this world offers me nothing that I want. But behind this one, there is one that I want. Wouldn't you love to see every brother as the face of Christ where love is just liberally poured out and it's just one big cry fest as we awaken? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Thanks. Um, sis, I'm wondering if maybe we have a couple of minutes here. 
to add something i'm i'm guided to to uh just talk about paragraph five here in in the lesson 162 i am as god created me um he says here we honor you today yours is the right to perfect holiness right yours is the right to perfect holiness you now accept this is a really really important but i know that from my own experience and the experience of many others too it it's still in the realm of just keeping it intellectual you know theory and not really in the felt experience mm -hmm. it would be lovely to help or yeah to help our family our beautiful family here to maybe take it into the heart and have a felt experience because that's what really collapses time. That's what collapses the gap. Yes. Is that felt experience. And he says, yours is the right to perfect holiness, you, which you now accept, which is your incorruptible innocence, your, in, your changeless mm -hmm. innocence, the changeless innocence that you are. And when you know, not just intellectually, but when you know it, when you've accepted it, when you've really, really received it in your experience, in your heart, that you are changeless innocence. It's there that you know that you are as God created you. It's there that the gap is closed in experience, not just for ourself alone, yeah. it just travels through like a blast of immense light to everyone. So, can we? Yeah. I would like to. I would like to share um, a prayer mm. that um, I think it, I'm not sure, but I think it's in the End of Death, Volume One, mm -hmm. um, and it's only short. That's why I'd like to share it here. Can I share it and read it? No. Yes. I Pointing to the, the meat of this, yes, let's have a felt experience. It's too easy to close the book and say, check, I did 162, we wait for tomorrow's lesson. Let's feel today's lesson in a, in a joint holy instant. So yes, let's join, close our eyes and just drop into our hearts. We don't need to know anything. We don't have to figure anything out. We let the I know mind go and we just open open our hearts and let us just share share this prayer that came from Jesus. And uh, just to let you know that uh, I, I will make sure that the link, the audio link to this prayer, if you want to use it daily or whenever it calls to you, is going to be in the description box, all right? It'll be right at the top. And it's called the Changeless Innocence Prayer. So here we go. Oh, right. So we're joining with Holy Spirit and Jesus. We're breathing. We're making a space in our heart to accept that we are as God created us. We are that changeless innocence. We can't really accept that we are as God created us unless, until we actually accept and receive that we are incorruptibly innocent. My problems have already been solved because I am guiltless. Only my mistaken guilt can cause the appearance of problems. Guilt is a secret wish for punishment in the forms of conflict, sickness, pain, loss, depression, lack, etc. My problems have already been solved because the single source of them all is reversed once I accept my changeless innocence. This is my holiness. I only see problems when I forget my incorruptible innocence. 
as I reclaim my innocence, problems must disappear. This is my divine and invincible immunity to all the ego made as a defense against my most holy self. The single cause of all my problems is rejection of my changeless innocence. The single solution to all my problems is acceptance of my changeless and incorruptible innocence, my holiness. This is the atonement. As I breathe deeply into the stillness of my heart, I breathe the life of God. In this holy instant, I give all my fears, grievances and self-judgments to the light of God to be dissolved. In this breath, I soften my resistance and allow his love to unburden me. I open my heart to receive the immediate grace of my unchanged innocence as the totality of my being. I am as God created me. As I allow God's grace to breathe through me, I joyfully accept that love is living me now. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Amen. I am as God created me and nothing but that. Thanks for joining everybody and making it a felt experience. Thank you. And thank you for the prayer. Thank you. We shall see you next time. <laughs>